Oh, howdy. Well, we're in the midst of a civil war. The year is 1862. This is all over states' rights to have the right to have slaves. I don't know about you, but I don't feel that anyone should be able to own another person. So I'm taking it upon myself to help these runaways get north to freedom. Now, of course, you know a lot of people don't know how to read back then. So we need to figure out a way to communicate with them. So let me show you something. What does that look like to you? It's something that you see every single day, maybe when you're in the car with your mom or dad. That's right, it's a stop sign. But how did you know that? Did it say stop across the front? No. What were some of the clues? Oh, the color and maybe the shape? Well, now that you know that that's what it means, you'll always remember it, even though you can't read. And that's what we did. We actually used quilts and the patterns to help our people find their way. This one here, this is the actual Underground Railroad kind of looks like a railroad sign or a crossing, right? Especially if you put it this way, it looks like the tracks. It's kind of neat. So you knew that you were on the right path to get into your freedom. Now this next one here, this one here is called Drunkard's Path. Now if you've ever seen anybody leaving late at night, they've been drinking a little bit. They're not going to take a straight line to where they're going. Well, that's what we're going to tell you to do as well. We're going to ask you to not go straight there. It means somebody's following you. We don't want you to get caught but we've left you some clues along the way because if you see a quilt hanging out on somebody's front porch it's nothing special it just means that we were doing laundry that day and hung it out there so no one ever thought anything about there being an actual hidden code in those quilt squares now this one here up here at the top this is flying geese because the animals are going to show us where to go. Now, what do geese do in the winter? Yeah, that's right. They migrate. They go up. They come down here south. But in the springtime, they're going to head back up north. So you're going to be following the geese because they're going to take you north to the direction you need to be. Now, this next one here, this is called the bear's paw. Now, what do bears do in the winter? That's right. They hibernate. But in the spring, they're going to come out. They're going to start looking for berries and food. Now, if you've never been up north in the winter, you've never seen snow before. So that's telling you you need to hunker down. You need to find a place to stay until it's safe to journey. Plus, in the spring, those bears are going to make a nice path in the woods and help you get your way through. Now, our final animal that's going to help us is birds in flight, right here. Now, again, those birds, just like the geese up here, they're going to migrate and they're going to help you get north in the springtime when they're heading back up. What's neat about this one, if you actually turn it sideways, it kind of looks like arrows pointing in that direction. So you always want to be looking for those animals that are going to help you out. Now the animals are not the only ones that are going to help you. You also have some people along the way. Now this top one up here, this is Shoe Fly. Now Shoe Fly, he was an actual person, one of the conductors of the Underground Railroad, and he helped people along the way. So if you ever came across shoe fly, you could just draw a picture on the ground and that picture might be this next one here. This is the log cabin. This log cabin was a safe house so that you knew here is a place that you could stop for the night. Maybe get something to eat, possibly even some new clothes or some shoes. This also might have been a church. And if it was a church, these dark areas would have been here at the bottom and at the top, and it would have looked like stairs, telling you that it was the staircase of the church. Now inside, you're going to find this next one. This is bow ties. See little bow ties? It's also a pinwheel, because if you turn it this way, you can actually kind of see the pinwheel design going on. But bow ties means that this is a place that they're going to get you new clothes. Because if you're a runaway, most likely you don't have any shoes, or good clothes on and you're going to stick out like a sore thumb. So you want to make sure that you are going to look the part. So they're going to make sure that you have those clothes. So those people are going to help you. But along the way, we're also going to get some inspiration. 
this top one here, this is the Carpenter's Wheel. So who is the most famous carpenter of all time? That's right, Jesus. And he is our inspiration to remind us that everything's going to be okay, that we're going to make it. So keep on keeping on. And then this one here is the basket. This is telling us that we need to go ahead and get as many supplies as we can find that we can liberate and borrow and take with us because we have a long journey along the way. And this bottom one here, this is called the monkey's wrench. And that's telling us to grab all the tools and things that we can get a hold of because we may need them on our journey as well to help maybe build something for shelter or maybe even once you get up north so you have something to build with when you get there to make your final establishment. And all that you're going to put here inside your basket. Now where are we heading? Maybe we have to head out at night? Well, right here we have the North Star. The North Star is part of the Big Dipper. And there's a song that we used to sing here in these parts out in the field, and it was called Follow the Drinking Gourd. Now the masters of the house had no clue what we were singing about, but the slaves sure did. And they were able to communicate that with each other. And at night, that's what you're gonna be looking for, is that North Star. It's gonna help guide you on your way. Now where exactly are we going? Well, we're going right here to the crossroads. This one here, the crossroads represents Cleveland, Ohio. Because once we got to Cleveland, we could get on a boat and get across Lake Erie. We're in Canada and we are totally free. They are never gonna bring us back. This final one here, this is the wagon wheel. Now a wagon wheel, if this one goes up at the main house, that means there might be a party going on that night and no one's gonna be paying any attention to us at all. So it's time for us to go ahead and pack up that basket with all of our tools that we need to follow that North Star to get heading up to the crossroads. And along the way, we're gonna stop there at the log cabin where we may be able to find shoe fly to help us get those bow ties. And then during the day, of course, the animals are gonna help us on our way too. So a lot of people were able to get their way up north because of this simple code. Now it's not written down, so a lot of people believe that it never existed. But I know my great grandma's recipe for her biscuits. Now it's not written down because it's a family secret, but it was handed down generation after generation through our storytelling. And that's why stories are so important. And that's why we need to continue telling stories to each other because that's how we keep our history. So I hope you've enjoyed the travel on the Underground Railroad today with me. And I hope that you stay safe in your journeys and with everything that's going on nowadays. Thanks again, and I'll see you later.